Wanakam, Namaste, Namaskar. We are back in Jalprayag again. Uh, before I start and uh, continue on the topic which I've been talking about till now, which is your day's work, I want to dedicate this one episode to my students of uh, Second Night who just passed out on Monday, the day before yesterday. Uh, I don't have to tell them because uh, they know why. But uh, just uh, highlight one thing. There you go. Cheers, guys. And I think uh, you people can figure out the two reasons also. For the uh, rest of the audience, I think that will be a mystery. I will leave it as a mystery. But uh, these boys will uh, understand. Okay, uh, let us start off uh, the main purpose. I'm going to go into the next episode. And uh, as you can see on the screen, I'm going to talk about uh, three topics today. One is uh, a Rumbline course, then a GC or a Great Circle course, and then departure. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, let us... Uh, Quickly look again, uh, a kind of a recap when I'm sailing between two places. I will always involve course and distance. This is what I want uh, always course and distance. Uh, we, in the last uh, episode, we were seeing the different type uh, of measurement of uh, courses also. And uh, we even saw distances as well, and one of the important ones was uh, nautical miles. So let me just go ahead with that. Uh, when I'm talking about these course and distance, I get involved into uh, two uh, very important ways of sailing, basically. One is your rumbline sailing, and another one is your great circle sailing. So let us define each one of them. Uh, rumbline, basically, on the surface of the earth, it is a line drawn on the surface of the earth. And this line is going to cut all the meridians it passes with exactly the same angle. So I'm going to show you uh, a picture. It is a cross section or a side view. So I've shown you a couple of meridians and then the equator. So I'm going to draw a line here in such a way that that line has to cut all the meridians at the same angle. And please remember that is possible only by this line. Now, why? Because if you remember what is the definition of a course, it is basically if you are heading exactly along this line, it is again the angle measured at the vessel from the true north in clockwise direction and that too up to the four and a half line of the ship. That is what is your course. Now you will see, I'm going to draw these courses. Uh, I'm going to show you pictorially. You can see these arcs, black color arcs. You can see all of them are exactly same. Earth is curved. So if you want to maintain the same angle, your line also has to be curved. So there's just, just before I wrote this also, I told you course is the angle between your meridian and four and a half line of the ship. And if you look at as a concept wise, this angle is same all along because as the earth curves, my course is also curving. So I'm keeping my course same. Okay, that is what is your rumbling. This is what is the definition of rumbling on the surface of the earth. Now, you might be a little bit surprised because on the Earth's surface, a rumbling course will always spiral and go towards the pole. Uh, those beginners who have already just sailed and come back as a cadet and all for you, it will be slightly tricky because you have always seen a rumbling differently on the charts. But right now, we are still on the surface of the Earth. So on the surface of the Earth, Rumbline is a line which spirals towards the poles. Okay. Let us look uh, what is a great circle line. It is a straight line drawn on the surface of the earth 
And obviously, because it is a great circle, the plane of this line is going to cut the earth into two equal halves. But when it cuts the meridians, it will always cut the meridians at different times. Let us look at a polar view of the Earth. I'm looking from the North Pole, that is from the space onto the North Pole. So this is the North Pole. If you look at the meridians, this is how they will look when you see from the North Pole. These are your meridians. If I draw a straight line, again, going by the definition of a course, you will see these are the angles and they are different. They keep changing. So if you want to achieve a GC course, please remember I need to keep altering this course continuously. Now this is what is a GC course. There are some special cases of Rumbline plus GC where both of them are combined in uh, just two cases. One of the cases is in case you sail along any meridian, that means from North Pole, you are going to South Pole or from South Pole, you're coming to North Pole, and the courses are only 0, 0, 0 and 180. In that case, every meridian sailing is a rumb line as well as GC, if you go by the definition. The next one is if you sail along the equator. If you sail along the equator, you can do only 0, 090 and 270. That is also a combined rumb line plus GC. Okay. If you sail anywhere else, let us say a parallel of latitude or anywhere, anywhere else, it is called a rumbling. Uh, this you should try to understand with the definition. So if you understand the definition, you will see that what I've told is correct. Okay. Let me just again show you with a couple of pictures. You will see here the great circle, the plane of which cuts the earth into two equal halves. So if I say A and B, two points, now, if I draw a great circle course, this is how it looks. It's a straight line on the earth. But if you draw a rumb line course on the earth where it cuts all the meridians with equal angles, you will see it will continue on spiraling and go towards the poles. Okay, this is what is. Again, uh, a similar picture which shows you a GC as a straight line and rumb line as a line which cuts all the meridians with the same angle. He has shown you with theta. So this is the difference between rumb line. Let us come to a uh, next topic, which is very, very important. Why? Because uh, this is where a lot of people fail to uh, grasp the concept. It has got a lot of implications on the sailing and a lot of implications on definitions and uh, usage also. This uh, word departure or title departure has to be related to something we have already defined, which is your D-long. We already defined D-long a couple of times. D long is either the shorter arc of the equator or the shorter angle at the poles measured between two meridians. Okay, I'm going to show you that. So let us say these are the two meridians. It is the shorter arc of the equator or the shorter angle at the poles. Now, at the equator, what we measure is an east west distance, and that is what is called D long. But at the poles, we measure it as an angle, okay? And let us say I have two points A and B. I'm using this A and B to sail. If I measure it as an east-west distance on the equator, it is D-long. But if I sail between the same two meridians at some other latitude, any latitude, Please remember the angle does not change. Why? Because the angle is constant between the two meridians. Angle does not change. Let this be 45 degrees just for the sake of it. You will see the angle called D long never changes between the two A and Bs. I've shown you first set of A and B at the equator, the second set at 45 degrees. The angle does not change. Please remember, angle is still the same. But then what changes? It is that east-west distance that is changing. So at equator, the east-west distance, what you measure as D-long is some value. But when you come to this particular latitude, wherever it was, this A and B, the second one, please remember it is no more called as D-long. This east-west distance is called departure. 
This is always measured in nautical miles at any other latitude which is not equal. So please look at some facts. If I take the east-west distance at the equator, I can still call it as departure y because it's east-west, but it is equal to d long. It has got a value. But when I start moving between the same two meridians up to the poles, you will see that east-west distance is zero. Between the same two meridians, it is zero. The angle is same, but the distance is not. This is something important for you to understand. The angle called d long is same, but the east-west distance is not the same at the equator and the poles, and it reduces and becomes zero. So based on this, I can form a small equation. Okay, I'm not deriving the equation, I'm just giving you the equation. When you try to relate departure and d long, I'll just go back. Departure and d long. Departure is at any other latitude. d long can be measured east west distance only at the equator. So this departure and d long can be given in a relation called departure is equal to d long of and into cos of latitude. If I reshuffle this equation, departure by d long is cos of latitude. Okay. So if I put cos of zero, it is one. So that means that the equator departure is equal to d long in terms of east west distance. But if I put cos 90, it is zero. So in terms of east west distance, departure is zero. That is what is the relation. Okay, this is what I mentioned. Departure is equal to d long at the equator, departure is zero at the post. This gives rise to the first sailing concept called parallel sailing. And parallel sailing we will do only at one particular latitude. So that means I'll be moving only 0, 090 0 and 270. That is what is called parallel sailing. And the formula is exactly what I've given here. Departure by d long is equal to cos of latitude. So using this formula, we can quickly do some simple uh, questions so that you can understand the usage of this formula. I'm going to give you a simple question in departure. The question says that uh, d long measure between two meridians is 100 minutes. At what latitude you will find the same east-west distance becoming half at 50 miles, 50 minutes or whatever. So obviously at any other distance, it is any other latitude, it's called departure. So my question, I'm going to phrase it on the diagram. If I say I have two meridians, and when I measured at the equator, it was 100 minutes, or 100 miles also you can say. But at some other latitude, this A and B became 50, which is exactly half. By looking at the previous uh, relation, if I go back to the previous relation, we saw that at equator, your departure is max, which is zero degree latitude, and at 90 degree latitude, it is zero. So with a simple understanding of concept, you can come to this conclusion very easily. Equator is zero, pole is 90, and I want exactly half of it, so average is going to be zero plus 90 divided by two, which is just like your mean. So 45 degrees, you can jump to this answer. And I bet a lot of people will do also. You should realize this answer is wrong. Your earth is not a straight line. It is curved. So it is not just straight. Earth is never straight. So it is curved. So for that, I have to use the principle which I use in your parallel sailing. And that is where this cosine or cos comes into picture. Cosine is a curve which will slowly, gradually move and change. It is not a straight line. So I'm going to use the parallel sailing formula. And I'm going to use exactly whatever data is given to me. The sides have to be always or uh, uh, this departure and D-long should be always given in minutes. Why? Because we are talking about distance, which is east-west. So I'm putting cos lat is equal to 50 divided by 100, which is half, which is 0.5. So 
So I need to find that what latitude cos is going to be half, which is cos inverse of 0.5. You will find it is 60 degree latitude. So when it is a, a straight line, I could have done 0 plus 90 divided by 2 is 45. But on the earth, I cannot do it. I have to find the cosine. So it is 60 degree latitude. Just as a brain teaser, you can just have a look. If I use by chance a sine formula, where can I get half? Please try it. You will find the answer yourself. Okay, don't expect 45. Let me go and give you one more last question. It is a reverse application of the same formula. Let us say a vessel sails between A and B at a latitude of 27 degrees north. And he does a easterly course, so that means 090, for 275 minutes or 275 miles. So A and B is here. This distance is 275 miles at that 27 degree latitude. I want you to find what will be the D long between this A and B. Please remember, D long is measured always at the equator as a east west distance. At the same time, he can give you or he can ask you as an angle at the poles also. Both are D-long, same thing. So I'm going to use, again, the same formula. Let us just quickly see departure by D-long. Let me put what is there. And I've kept what is not there in the left side. So D-long, I don't know. So 275 divided by cos 27. Answer is 308.6 minutes. Please remember, when you put it in minutes, it is called here east-west distance. So that is what is measured at the equator as 308.6. Now, if I ask you, please tell me uh, the same value as angle at the poles. I need to convert that into degrees and minutes. All I need to do is each degree is 60 minutes. So you can see it will be 5 degree 8.6 minutes at the poles. So this is what is a simple question for usage of your departure and D-long concept. Uh, this module comes to an end. I hope uh, it was useful for you to understand the relation between uh, departure and D-long. At the same time, what was your GC course and your drum line course. Well, uh, keep watching Jal Prayag. I'll catch you soon with the next episode soon. Till then, Manakam, Namaste, Namaskar.